Hello everyone and welcome to the Sicilian Paramore. Today we're going to be looking at a trap for white in the Sicilian defense Sweshnikov variation. So without further ado, let's get into it. So after e4, the move c5 signifies the Sicilian. And after knight f3, knight c6, d4, the open Sicilian, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, the move e5 signifies the starting position of the Sweshnikov variation. The Sveshnikov variation of the Sicilian defense is a very dynamic variation for two main reasons. Firstly, the opening might seem flawed because it is giving control up of the critically important d5 square. However, we are attacking the knight on d4 and gaining some kind of peace activity. So in the entire opening complex, the battle is between the static weakness on d5 and peace activity that black can generate. So after the main line, knight from d to b5, the knight on b5 is actually threatening to give a check on d6, which will misplace the black king or give up the two bishop advantage. So d6 is pretty much the move played here. And after bishop g5, we're pinning the knight to the queen and gaining even more control over the d5 square. So after a6, knight a3, b5, we reach the main tabia of the Sicilian Sveshnikov. Now, black is threatening b4, which will fork both the knights. So, two most common moves here are knight to d5, and which is a modern way, and the other old main line, which is bishop takes f6. Now, the trap is right here. The most common move here is g takes f6, and this is the theory recommended and the best move. However, I can see, or we all can understand why many amateurs or novice players will not like doubling their pawns because of fear of castling, because they cannot castle queenside, the c file is open, and also castling kingside now looks kind of shady because of the destroyed pawn structure. However, this is actually a good move because you're preparing the break f5, which will attack white center and also give a lot of counterplay to black. However, after bishop takes f6, many people here play queen takes f6. Now, this is actually a bad move, and we are going to try and refute this today. So this is the trap. Knight d5. It's attacking the queen and also threatening the c7 square, on which the knight will fork the king and the rook. So the most common and the probably the only move here is queen to d8. And now, there's a very good move here, which is the move c4. However, I'm not recommending this, but I am saying that it is a pretty good move. For example, after, let's say, bishop takes, oh, sorry, b takes c4, we don't even have to take the pawn straight away with the knight. We can actually go rook c1, and after the common moves, bishop, c, bishop e7 and knight c4. We are already threatening a lot of catastrophes <laughs> down the c-file, and it is a good position. In fact, a pretty comfortable position for white to play. Also, after, say, b4, we can actually ignore the pressure on the knight and just play queen to a4, because we are threatening the knight on c6. So, say, after bishop d7, white, black might be thinking this is a pretty good position, because we are threatening discovered attacks of the queen when the knight moves and things like that and also we are threatening the knight with our pawn ha, don't whistle at me however after knight b5 spectacular move we are seeing a lot of problems in the black setup say after a takes b5 queen takes queen takes knight c7 check we are already uh, an exchange up so after king d8, say knight takes a8, knight d4, threatening the c2 square, rook c1, and this is actually a comfortable position because the knight on a8 can, knight on a8 will not be trapped. It will come out via b6 and then probably to d5 where it is very powerfully posted. I urge you to look at these variations yourself. However, the move c4 is not what I'm recommending here. I recommend the more barbaric bishop takes b5. And this is basically aiming for a lot of peace play and the weakness of the c7 square. So after the obvious move, a takes b5, otherwise you're a pawn down for nothing. Knight takes b5 is already threatening this beautiful geometrical pattern here. <laughs> basically, you're using one knight 
and the other knight will jump to c7 and fork the king and the rook. The rook cannot be saved almost anywhere and uh, giving a check on the c7 will actually displace the king which is in the center already so it will be a pretty good position. However, black might try to bail out with the move queen a5 and believe me I've gotten this position in online blitz games more than like 10 times and uh, the most uh, obvious reply here would be to either drop the knight back or drop the other knight back to protect but no that the right move is c3 and uh, an astute player will understand that queen takes b5 is simply not possible because knight c7 check is a family fork also there are a few things you can try the best variation here would be rook to a7 but we'll look at that later however if uh, you know black wants to save his rook by rook b8 we enter this beautiful variation with b4 now note that out of I don't know how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight squares that the queen can go to. Uh, and just taking the knight is not good because we're going to have knight c7 again. Don't miss that me. Okay, so after, out of all these squares, there's the only one safe square, which is d8. Uh, say, queen to uh, a6, we are again having this fork the same thing with queen to a8 and all right okay so after b4 the only safe square is queen to d8 but now we're having problems again because after knight b to c7 the only two legal moves are either take the knight with the queen which you don't want to do of course and play king to d7 however king to d7 just leads to mate in two you can uh, try to pause and guess this out but it's pretty prosaic queen g4 check the only move is f5 and after queen takes f5 it is checkmate so this was the whole trap but as i promised i will show you the good recommended variation after queen takes uh, queen a5 check c3 and the main move rook a7 now rook a7 gives up the rook but is defending all the catastrophe which is about to happen in the c7 square so after knight takes, queen takes, the move a4, and the best play here goes as bishop e7, b4, and remember we have two queenside runners here, which are going to cause a lot of practical problems for black. Your computer might not agree with this, and it will somehow defend, but you're not playing computers, are you? So after castle, knight takes e7 check, uh, we're just eliminating pieces. Queen takes e7, castle, bishop e6, Queen d3, you know, connecting the rooks now, rook a8, rook from f to b1, queen c7 and a5. You can already see a lot of problems with the black setup. The two pawns on the queen side are just going to roll over black and it's going to be really tough to handle them. And we have two rooks, don't, remember, don't forget that. And the pawn on d6 is pretty weak. So even if we are losing a lot of steam, we can always draw this. Uh, if anyone is interested in the current evaluation, Stockfish 7 at the depth of 22 here is 23 is giving uh, almost a pawn advantage uh, 0.96 to be exact to white here and if you let it run for a while you will see the evaluations going up all right so this was it for the video and um, if you're if you like it uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more also, don't forget to check out my previous videos, you might find something to your taste. Alright then, until next time, bye bye.